What's up Bears fam? My name is Dan Durkin and welcome back to the All-22 Review. Justin Fields' highly anticipated preseason rookie debut is in the books and man do we have a lot to break down. Poise, dual threat nature, arm talent, all of the physical traits that we knew that the Bears were getting when they traded up for Justin Fields were on display, but there's several teachable moments that came from this game, which is exactly what you look for in the preseason. Situational football, backed up in his own territory twice, had to lead a two-minute drive, led a drive coming out of a half that really put the team on a nice trajectory into the third quarter, had a red zone opportunity. So in terms of teachable moments, this game is filled with them. I'm going to go through some of the plays that stood out for me. Let's look at the tape. When I did my deep dive on how the Bears can set Justin Fields up for success, I summarized the two years of game charting into some high-level themes and then grouped them into strengths and opportunities. Against the Dolphins, you saw reps that brought this visual to life, and I'll be sure to point out when they happened during the film. I also proposed three ways that Matt Nagy can tailor his offense to accentuate Fields' gifts and his strengths. I discussed making play action the foundation of the passing game. On play action plays against the Dolphins, Field went four for five for 47 yards and a touchdown, and the one in completion was a flat out drop by Rodney Adams that would have gone for at least 17 yards. He also had a scramble off of an outside zone bash play action play that went for 21 yards. I can't emphasize enough that play action must be the foundation of the Bears passing game in 2021 both given where Fields is at with his development and especially the state of the offensive line. I also spoke about running more plays from under center. Under Nagy, the Bears have developed some formation tells that defenses have definitely picked up upon. So as a consequence, they must run more of their offense from under center. Against the Dolphins, Field played for 33 snaps, 21 from the gun and 12 under center. But keep in mind that he orchestrated that field goal drive on his two minute drill with all six snaps coming from the gun. So there was good balance there. And the third, I talked about using outside zone as the running foundation. Khalil Herbert sprung two big runs off of outside zone and all but one of the play action plays that they ran with fields came off of outside zone run action. It just creates the ability for him to bend the, bend the run back and create more depth in the pocket. So I, I think it's the right thing to do for the offense. Looking at the game tape, let's start with some teachable moments first. Fields mentioned after the game to the media that the fumble was the only critical error that really stood out to him. We'll definitely look at that play, but I also want to point out a few throws that he made fading away off his back foot, which negates his ability to really drive the ball with accuracy. The first came on this throw to Jesse James. As you can see, there's late pressure up the middle, which prevents Fields from being able to step up into the pocket. So he retreats and floats the ball late to Jesse James. It's a really dangerous throw where he's backed up in his own territory. On this, you either need to get rid of the ball quicker once he settles into the zone or just throw it away altogether. The second back foot throw that I noted came uh, during the two minute drill on a vertical or a nine route to Javon Wims up the sideline. Fields has time, but he again fades back and he throws the ball off his back foot and it floats and it floats off the field of play. On this, plant your feet, sink your cleats into the ground and drive the ball and give the receiver a chance. Now let's get to the fumble. On this fumble, the Dolphins did send some B-gap pressure on the left side of the offensive line. And from an odd front, they sent a linebacker and they looped an end and a stunt through the A-gap. And so the pressure up the middle flushes Fields from the pocket to his left. And there's a few things that go wrong here. First off, he has to hold the ball high and tight to his pads if he's going to scramble with it. He can't dangle it out there at any position on the field, let alone inside your 20 yard line. And second is the late spin move, which actually allows a defender to close and strip the ball away from him. I like Fields' hustle to get the ball back, but it made me think of a Trubisky play a couple years ago against the Vikings when he separated his shoulder going to recover a, a loose ball on the sideline. This is a rep that Fields must, must learn from. Now let's get on to the good stuff. First off, let's start with some elite arm strength on display. I'm not going to ask everybody to dust off their algebra textbooks and go do the Pythagorean theorem with me here, but man, this is a 40 yard flick of the wrist on a dime and it definitely caught my attention. 
off of a three-step drop from the gun, Fields slides to his right, and from one hitch, he drops this into the bucket for Rodney Adams. The ball placement is on full display here. This is an excellent play by the defensive back who was in phase on the throw, but to me, if this ball is headed to that guy number 12 that are standing on the sideline, I think it's a completion. Speaking of which, Matt Nagy, get Fields some reps with the first team immediately. On the two minute drill drive, Fields made a no look throw. The edge is lost on the right side, so he climbs and slides to his right, and he dupes the defense by looking down John Bea Johnson in the flats, only to hit Justin Hardy 20 yards down the field. This is ridiculous video game stuff right here. Finally, we have a slot fade to Adams. He threw it slightly fading away again, but he put just the right amount of touch in the ball to give Adams a chance in man coverage. So in man coverage, the defender has his back to the ball. It's a great effort by Adams to haul it in, but the ease with which Fields made this throw is very notable. Finally, Fields is a dual threat quarterback. He can beat a defense from within and out of structure of a play. The fact that he's faster than guys who are 30 pounds lighter than him is crazy, and it's really crazy to see in live action. On this naked bootleg off of outside zone, he baits the flat defender. The defender must respect him as a runner, but he's also high load by the route structure. So Fields calmly directs Riley Ridley to sit down in the zone, and he picks up an easy first down. Similar situation on this play. Leak on the right edge, so he breaks the pocket and rolls right. Against man coverage, the cornerback is in conflict. He must respect Fields as a runner, so he leaves his coverage assignment, whom Fields finds for an easy first down. This is backyard football right here and not the basis of an offense over the course of a season, but it's definitely a chain mover in this situation. On Fields' first preseason touchdown, there's a leak on the blind side, which he feels, but he keeps his eyes down the field. And with the end arriving behind him and reaching for him, he doesn't panic. He backpedals and turns on the Jets, and he wins a foot race to the end zone. I love the recognition of man coverage here. This enables him to take advantage of defenders who are eyeing, eyeing their coverage responsibility and not the ball, which is in the hands of a deadly runner like Justin Fields. You have to love the athleticism, the poise, and the decision making on this touchdown in the red zone. Throughout the game, the Dolphins played tight man coverage. Off this outside zone bash play action, all of his receivers are gloved up, but he's able to make something out of nothing on a 21 yard scamper. Finally, we'll take a look at Fields' touchdown pass on a Y leak concept, also known as always open. This is an excellent design and excellent execution by all 11 offensive players on this play. The Bears initially show outside zone to the left, with the flood route developing to the offense's right. They pull the guard to sell like they're setting up for a deeper shot to the right side of the field, but James leaks across the formation to the left side numbers and is as open as you'll ever see in an NFL football game for an easy pitch and catch touchdown. We have this both from the broadcast and the all 22 views, just so you can see the amount of space that was created on this play. Fields ran this play to perfection at Ohio State, and it's a great call inside an opponent's 40-yard line as you're showing so much and really testing the defense's discipline. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, it's shameless self-promotion time. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help me out. And if you want to, you can also follow me on Twitter, at DJ Durkin. I provide in-game, real-time analysis for all Bears games throughout the season. Please stay healthy and well. We'll see you guys soon.